Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. This time we've got yet another video in the series about basic oscilloscope use and this time we're going to do something that's a little bit more involved in that we're going to try and get the oscilloscope to show us a bit more than just uh, voltage against time. Now I'm going to try and explain it as clearly as I can although it's potentially quite complicated and obviously I'm using uh, my own uh, signal generator on my own oscilloscope uh, you're going to be using different kit so you're obviously going to have to tweak this to suit and in the main part of the video uh, I was trying to explain what I was doing I was having a few problems getting the scope to, to trigger properly and I just sort of got on with it and um, didn't worry too much and then when I'd finished I thought hmm I'm going to refilm that because uh, I should have been better at that than I was but then when I reviewed the footage I thought actually it's probably worth leaving this in because uh, what you can see on there is the kind of things that are likely to happen when you're using the scope in this way and it might just help help you if you're um, maybe not used to doing this kind of thing to actually realize what the display might look like if it isn't set up exactly so I've quite deliberately le left that in and then uh, later on I sorted out the trigger and I just filmed a quick postscript which I'm also going to put at the end of that so let's dive in and go straight to the bench right one of the things I wanted to try and do with this video is to um, encourage you to experiment with your scope it's a really good way of learning um, and yeah read the manual um, watch plenty of videos but you know mess with the thing as well um, and I think as long as you're sensible you're not going to do anything other than increase the chances of learning something so what I've got here on the breadboard is a, a circuit and it's a filter circuit now I will put um, in the description I will put a link to a PDF of this circuit but in in one sense this doesn't matter this is just if you like the the device under test as it's sometimes called and this is a, a notch filter um, and so it's uh, it uh, filters out a, a range of frequencies and allows frequencies either side of that to pass or that's what it's supposed to do so it's an op amp with a, a network of resistors and capacitors and as I say I'll put the circuit diagram on for you and I'm feeding signals in at one end and I've got the scope channel 1 attached to the output so um, first thing I'm going to do is put uh, a signal through and the signal there is at 7 kilohertz and you can see the if I just tweak the time base a little bit you can see we've got a, a sort of a sensible waveform coming out um, and that tells us that the circuit is working um, but it doesn't tell us uh, very much else. Now if we increase the frequency, so now I'm going to go to 8 kilohertz, uh, there's quite a noticeable change in amplitude there. You can st if I go back to flip between 7, 8, now if I go to 9 and 10, it's changing. So let's, um, let's let the signal generator do the heavy lifting. I'm going to swap on to another channel which has got uh, a sweep uh, set up and I'm going to switch that on and I've got it set into sweep for eight seconds actually just going to turn the amplitude down a little so what's going on here is as the frequency increases the amplitude reduces but then it starts to rise again so as the frequency gets higher the, the amplitude starts to rise so clearly the, the notch um, is working so let's now go back to our um, non-swept channel for a moment and we're back on 8 megahertz there and if we step up through yeah we can probably find the lowest point so what we're doing here effectively is using the scope to um, identify if you like something a bit different because what you've normally got on here you've got time and you've got voltage so time on the x-axis voltage on the y-axis but what we're noticing here is as the frequency changes the amplitude is changing so 
time's sort of less important to us. It needs to be there to allow us to view the waveform. But it's the amplitude we're interested here at a, at a certain frequency. So I'm um, just going to reposition the camera and um, we can look at the results of this. What I've got here then uh, is the frequency in kilohertz and the left hand column and the voltage peak to peak taken off the um, measurement function on the scope and we can see it drops and eventually begins to rise again. So one of the things we could do at this point is we could either use a piece of graph paper or just a piece of paper in this case um, or we could use Microsoft Excel something like that and we could produce a plot uh, and because I've gone at one kilohertz steps really the only thing I can actually do here is I can just join the dots I can't really extrapolate outside them and I won't bore the pants off you by um, getting a ruler out and drawing every detail but um, so yeah we've got a a result there and maybe that's good enough at one kilohertz intervals but clearly we can see that the output of our circuit is changing with frequency and there is our notch somewhere there so what we've essentially used the oscilloscope for there is to plot frequency against voltage which is actually for the output of the filter what we're really interested in um, we can do a little bit better than that. So I'm just going to reposition the camera again and let's have a look at how we might do a little better. Okay, here we are back again, exactly the same circuit. I'm feeding in the swept uh, frequency from the si signal generator and the actual uh, sweep time at the moment is eight seconds and I've picked eight seconds because um, that gives you a chance to actually um, see the frequency increasing in relation to, to the amplitude. Um, now a lot of signal generators um, have uh, a synchro output that outputs either a pulse or a change in waveform um, quite often from a socket on the back but not, not exclusively which um, tells you when the sweep is starting. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to change the sweep time uh, and I'm just going to pick 350 milliseconds and as you can see that looks particularly confusing now I've done that but what I've got on channel 2 is a square wave being output from the synchro on the back of the signal generator and this each square wave at the start of the square wave um, indicates the uh, start of a sweep so if I change the sweep time here to say 800 milliseconds you should see in a moment slightly there you go so slightly longer pulses so we'll drop back to 350 milliseconds should get shorter pulses so there you go so I wanted to show you that not because I've um, lost the plot because potentially here we've got a way of using the scope in a different way and we can also we can almost produce a display that shows frequency against voltage as opposed to the normal time against voltage it is still showing you time but what we're going to do here is we're going to try and get the scope to trigger off those pulses and we're not concerned with those pulses really because they're always going to be the same so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to reduce that to a sensible height and I'm going to wind it somewhere up there so it's out of the way and we're going to turn channel 1 back on uh, hopefully and we get that rather odd looking pattern or is it an odd looking pattern because if we now set the sweep source channel to channel 2 like so we've stabilized the display hopefully there or reasonably stabilized it so now what we've got and I'm going to just increase the time by slightly now what we've got it's just jumping about a bit but don't worry too much about that now what we've got is the speed of the sweep is governed by the, the uh, speed of the sweep on the signal generator and not 
anything to do with the waveform we're trying to, trying to display. So I'm going to increase the amplitude on channel 1, but I'm now going to wind it down the screen so that the center point is right at the bottom of the display. And see if we can just tweak the time base again. And now I'm going to move its position. I might just struggle there a little bit until that dip is in the middle. I, just, I told you I'd struggle, <laughs> and I am doing. Um, and your scope certainly may want to do this differently. Um, let me just try and get that back there for you. Let, let's let's have just two or three waveforms on the screen for now. So what we've now got here is sweep starts there. Let's just pause that. So sweep starts there as the pulse goes high. And this is the output of the filter. And as you can see, the energy output reduces, uh, not to zero because I've wound the display down, but it reduces to a lowest point and then rises up again. Um, which isn't so terribly different to something I drew before. Remember that this had a resolution of just one kilohertz and it's just crudely drawn, drawn by guess on a piece of plain paper. But what we've actually got there is we've produced a display which, in fact, we can actually be easy to tweak that now, um, hopefully. So we can now do something like that. And uh, I remember the display's pause for now. So here's the lowest point and there's the highest point, And we can see fairly easily um, that we have definitely got that, that notch. And that notch pattern keeps repeating. Now, um, possibly struggling to explain the subtleties of this to you. So to recap, what I've got going on here is um, is I've got the yellow trace is the output of the filter, but I'm choosing to trigger the scope using channel two, and what's on channel two is the synchro from the back of the signal generator. So I'm essentially getting the start of each sweep to occur in synchro with the sweep of the signal generator. So we've got start of sweep, end of sweep, and that effectively is the response curve of the filter. Although, of course, if I wind it back to the middle, you can see it actually is, or will be if I allow it to run, um, it'll be either side of the line. So what we've now done is we've we've actually on channel one we're displaying frequency against voltage, and by using channel two pulses to trigger that, we've actually managed to get ourselves um, a display that's not entirely different to uh, what you might get from a, a spectrum analyzer. And if I was to tweak the um, trigger settings a little bit, um, I could pause that, but I don't want to make the video unnecessarily long. So so there is hopefully a, a bit of a novel use for um, oscilloscope and a novel use for it in conjunction with um, a signal generator. Now I'm fortunate that the signal generator I'm using here is a siglant. Uh, I've also managed to achieve this kind of thing uh, using um, another signal generator and I'll put a link to that in the video up there and I had a couple of goes at this but in, eventually what I was able to do with the other signal generator it was a Felilec FY6900 what I was able to, to do with that I was able to trigger the sweep from a sawtooth waveform on channel 2 and um, obviously with the sawtooth waveform you've got start tails off. So I was able to start the sweep on the scope at the start of that pulse uh, and allowed voltage control to produce a sweep and then I was able to stabilize the display using um, the channel 2 and I was using channel 2 on the signal generator to control the, the, the sweep on channel 1. And as I say there's a video um, link which I've just put up earlier to that which um, explains the detail of that. Okay, a little bit of a postscript to the previous video. Um, I've just played about with the trigger settings on the uh, square wave on channel 2. Um, sweep time of about 
450 milliseconds in this case and you can hopefully now see that we've got a, a stable display and we're certainly showing the um, if you like the null point of the filter there and if I just uh, wind the display back so that zero is in the center you'll be able to see of course that is either side and so the point where the amplitude drops and then rises again is obviously uh, that point just there okay hopefully that's made a bit of sense uh, I needed to just play with the trigger settings I'm sure there were a few of you shouting at the, um, the, the computer saying change the trigger settings so I've now got it uh, on the uh, folding edge of the pulse on channel 2 and it, it stabilized the, the display nicely okay well hopefully that's made some sense uh, when I initially videoed as I said in, in the introduction when I initially videoed it um, I was going to refilm that that main part and then I thought no it's it really is worth you um, seeing uh, what kind of things go on when you're trying to get the display to work right and the, the postscript um, did indeed show that now I mentioned previous video where I used a different scope and a different signal generator so definitely worth checking that out. There's three previous scope basics videos, I'll put links to those in the description too. And the notch filter circuit, the op amp notch filter circuit that I've used in this video, uh, I'll put a link in the description to the website where you can find a circuit diagram for that one and also some good information about how you might configure the um, the discrete components around the op amp to get the notch that you actually desire. If you're interested in uh, multimeters, that kind of thing, uh, there's links in the description to the Kaiwitz tools. Uh, if you use those links and use the, the code that's also in the description, you'll get some discount and that helps the channel. If you've already done that, thanks very much. If you're thinking of doing that, yes please, that definitely helps. And if you'd like to consider subscribing, if you haven't, that's all completely free. It won't, um, it won't hurt at all. Uh, neither will pressing the like button. And doing both of those things uh, helps the channel enormously. So if you don't mind, that'd be good. Thanks very much. See you on the next video.